Hi, welcome. So in this video, I'm going to give you some basic information about vectors and start to talk about what they look like both algebraically and geometrically. So a vector is a mathematical object that has a magnitude and a direction. So what this means is that a vector is defined specifically on its magnitude and its direction. We use vectors a lot when we're talking about movement, and so they get used very frequently in physics because we're talking about the direction of movement and how much movement happened, the magnitude of that movement. But just keep in mind that vectors can be used in other situations. The movement example, specifically in physical settings, is just a good one for us to come back to if we're trying to understand how vectors work. So let's talk about these words, magnitude and direction. So magnitude is the length of the vector. It's just a word that we use to represent the length of the vector, the distance from the beginning to the end of it. Then the direction just represents where the vector is pointing. So we have something that points in a certain direction and the magnitude is how long it is. So I like to think of an example of, I went up five flights of stairs. So up the stairs would be the direction and the magnitude would be five, so for five flights of stairs. So this doesn't tell you specifically in which building I walked up the stairs, or if I was outside or inside. It doesn't give you a location, it just tells you the direction of the movement and how much movement it was, the distance I traveled. So just remember, magnitude is length, and direction is what you think it is. It's the direction the vector's pointing. We represent vectors with lines and arrows, as you'll see shortly when I draw some, but the important thing here is that vectors have a tip and a tail, meaning they have an initial point and a terminal point. So they start at the tail and end at the tip. The initial point's the tail and the terminal point is the tip. We just use this to help us represent direction. Now, what I wanna do to give us more information about vectors is talk about how we can represent them both algebraically with symbols or geometrically with graphs. So first, let's look at a vector geometrically. It's just a line with an arrow to represent the direction that we're going in. So I start here at the tail and I end at the tip, where the tail is the starting point, the initial point, and the tip is the terminal point. Then I can talk about the length of this vector, that's the magnitude. So I just look at the distance from the beginning to the end and that's the magnitude. Now I can take this vector and move it around. As long as it has the same magnitude and direction, I can place it anywhere I want and it still represents the same vector. So all of these vectors I've drawn here are equal because they all have the same magnitude and the same direction. So this is something that sets vectors apart from other mathematical objects we've maybe talked about in the past. So without having a specific location that they're destined for, they don't just have a specific X value and a specific Y value that they're attached to. Vectors can exist in any space as long as they have this given magnitude and direction. Moreover, these are sort of two dimensional looking vectors, but the same thing works for three dimensions. Okay, let's talk about what vectors look like algebraically. We typically talk about two dimensions or three dimensions just because we can represent these things in space, but even though we wouldn't really know how to draw them, we can actually have vectors that have n dimensions. So as long as n is some finite natural number, we can have a vector with that many components. So it looks like v with this little arrow above it is equal to, in these sort of pointed brackets, v1 comma v2 comma v3 comma all the way up to vn. Let's unpack what this notation means. So we use the arrow notation. I'm drawing like a half arrow above my v. Sometimes people might draw a full arrow. Or we can use a bold face. So a textbook might use a bold face. Obviously, it's harder to write out a bold face, so if you're typing it, you could use bold if you'd like, but I'm always going to use this little arrow. And this notation represents a vector. So we put this notation on our symbols in order to indicate that there is a vector happening, a vector being an object that has a magnitude and a direction. Then we use these pointed brackets 
to help us distinguish the vectors from coordinate points or intervals. So rather than using parentheses or maybe square brackets, we use these pointed ones to help vectors stand out. Then the last bit here is that if you look at that V1 through Vn, each of those items is called a component of the vector. So like a point in space might have coordinates, a vector has components. So the V1, V2, V3, Vn, each of those is a component of the vector. And since we're going to be primarily talking about vectors in two and three dimensional space, let me write you out some examples of those. So in two dimensions, we could say the vector A is equal to x, y. And in three dimensions, the vector B is equal to x, y, z. So we use that first component to represent the x distance. And then the y, the second component, represents the y distance. And in three dimensions, the third component, the z, represents the z distance. Okay, so let me show you how we would convert one of these written out symbolically vectors into an image. I'm going to do a two-dimensional and a three-dimensional example for you. Let's look at the vector 2, 5 in two dimensions and the vector 1, 3, 4 in three dimensions. Okay, so for the two-dimensional case, let me draw you some axes here. And I'm just going to draw the vector and then talk about how we know it looks this way. So here is the vector. So starting at the tail or the initial point, we go two to the right. So this is a positive two in the X direction. And then from there, we go up five in the Y direction. So there's a change in the Y by a positive five. So this two is for the X component of the vector and the five is for the Y component of the vector. Now, I sort of just drew this vector here on these axes, but we tend to put this vector in what's called standard position. So we start the vector at the origin at 0, 0, and then the x and y components of the vector just represent the sort of terminal point. So 2, 5 on our axes is where the vector ends. It starts at 0, 0 and goes to 2, 5. Okay, let's talk about our three-dimensional vector. So I'm gonna put this vector in standard position, starting at the origin, and I wanna figure out where its tail is. Where is the end of the vector, the terminal point? So I know it's at one in the X direction, three in the Y direction, and four in the Z direction. So to help us find this, I'm just gonna go one at a time and sort of walk along the graph here. So we move one in the X direction, that's a positive one. Then we would go three in the Y direction, and we would go four in the z direction. These are all positive, so we're in the first octant here. And I'm seeing that I can draw my vector in standard position, starting at the origin and ending at the point one, three, four. And this represents my vector. Remember, it doesn't have to be here, it can be anywhere in this space, but starting it at the origin helps us graph it a little easier, especially in three dimensions. So when I look at vectors, I like to think of them as movement. It's what helps me understand what's going on. So in all of these, we're basically starting at a point and then the components represent the movement that's happening. So for our two dimensional case, we went from the starting point to the position two five, which represented a change in X of two and a change in Y of five. And for the three dimensional example, we started at our initial point, the origin, and we ended at the point one, three, four. So we moved from 0, 0 to 1, 3, 4, and this vector represents that movement. Okay, so in this example, I gave you a vector and we drew it geometrically. Let's say instead I give you some information and I want us to find a vector. So let's find a vector from the point negative 1, 2 to the point 3, negative 7. So I'm going to draw my points here on some x, y axes. So I have negative 1, negative 2, and 3, negative 7. And we're starting at that negative one, negative two, and the vector is going to go from there to the point three, negative seven. So just looking at this, I can see the difference in the X and the Y. I'm noticing that we gain a distance of four in the X direction, and then we go a negative distance in the Y. We go a negative five. So with my vector, 
I should have 4, negative 5 as my vector, since that 4 represents the change in x, and the negative 5 represents the change in y. So with this, we can also find the vector algebraically, without needing to graph it. So you might notice that this is just the difference in the x components, so the difference between negative 1 and 3 is 4, and then the difference in the y components, so the difference between negative 7 and negative 2 is negative 5. Let me show you what this looks like. So we do 3 minus a negative 1, that's the terminal point minus the initial point for the x components, and then we do the same for the y components, negative 7 minus a negative 2. So with these minus minuses, I'm getting 3 plus 1 and negative 7 plus 2, which gives me 4, negative 5, and that matches my intuition from the graph. Having an algebraic way to do this is going to help us a lot when we start doing three dimensions, and it's harder to visualize what's going on between the two points. All right, so we can generalize this process for finding a vector between points to the three-dimensional case. So in general, if you're trying to find a vector from point A to point B, all you need to do is subtract the A coordinates from the B coordinates. So if we have a point A, that's x1, y1, z1, this is our initial point, and we're going to the point B, x2, y2, z2, our terminal point, then the vector between them, I'm going to call it the vector from A to B, is given by x2 minus x1 for our first component, y2 minus y1 for our second component, and z2 minus z1 for our third component. So we're just looking at the difference between the x values, how much did the x change, the difference between the y values, how much did the y change, and the difference between the z values, how much did the z change. And doing this will tell us our movement in each of those components and give us the vector we need. Alright, so that is the basics for vectors for this video. I'll talk more about vectors in my other videos, but that is it for right now. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.